What if mammoths returned today? Today, mammoth is just a word we use to describe someone or something that is enormous. But thousands and millions of years ago, they were animals that roamed many parts of the Earth, the largest animals of their time. It's been a long time since mammoths were alive on this planet, but what if they returned? With the advancements in science over the past few decades, it feels like a real possibility. But do we want this to happen? How would our world look if mammoths were back? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and maybe by the time you finish the video, you'll have a strong opinion on if mammoths should return, because there's a few angles of it that you may not have considered. Who are mammoths? First, we need to know just exactly who the mammoths are, and many people hear mammoth and immediately think of woolly mammoths because they're not only the most famous, but they're the most recent. However, they're far from the only mammoths that lived. The woolly mammoth was comparable to today's African elephant, which is the largest land animal on the planet. However, woolly mammoth was a bit bigger. In height, not a whole ton of difference, both about 10 to 12 feet, both also about 20 to 24 feet long. But the African elephant can reach 13,000, maybe even 14,000 pounds. The woolly mammoth could reach 16,000 pounds. Much heftier so he could withstand cold temperatures, and his woolly hair helped with that as well. They had an outer layer of long, coarse guard hair and a slightly curly underwool. Their tusks were 15 feet long, special tools used to dig under the snow and ice and find food. Woolly mammoths lived from around 300,000 to 400,000 years ago after diverging from a separate mammoth species, and they lasted all the way up until just 4,000 years ago. Not that long ago if you think about it. In fact, they were still around when the pyramids were built in Egypt. Although they were nowhere near Egypt, living in the northernmost parts of North America and Eurasia in steppe tundra habitats. Who did woolly mammoths diverge from? The steppe mammoth. The steppe mammoth lived during the early and middle Pleistocene from about 1.7 million years ago to 200,000 years ago. As is in the name, steppe mammoths were often found in cold, open steppe environments, but they weren't restricted to them. They spanned from Western Europe to Eastern Asia and were found in the high latitudes of Northern Asia, but they also lived as far south as Taiwan and Ryukyu Islands. Stab mammoths were even larger, usually over 13 feet tall and weighing 24,000 pounds. That's one and a half times the weight of a woolly mammoth. They also had enormous tusks, 13 to 15 feet long, weighing over 400 pounds each. They also had a coat of fur for their cold environments, but not as thick as woolly mammoth. There was also the Colombian mammoth, who also diverged from the steppe mammoth and lived in North America. There was some hybridization between them and the woolly mammoths, but Colombian mammoths themselves were gigantic, 14 feet tall, closer to 25,000 pounds. There was only slight overlap between the two in what is now southern Canada and northern United States, as Colombian mammoths avoided the Arctic regions, primarily from southern Canada down through the US and Mexico, and even reaching Costa Rica. They preferred open areas like parkland landscapes. They existed from around 1.5 million years ago to about 11,000 years ago. The oldest mammoth species is Mammuthus subplanifrons, which existed from 6.2 to 3.7 million years ago in southern and eastern Africa. These mammoths all went extinct at different times, but it is believed to be from similar reasons, one being the changing of the climate, which especially affected woolly mammoths and steppe mammoths as they had thicker coats built for cold weather and were having to deal with the constantly warming climate. The other reason was that humans began hunting these animals, and they were hunting far too many, driving their number down lower and lower, until 4,000 years ago, there were none left. How did they live? But before all the human hunting and the changing climate, the mammoths were thriving for quite a while. They lived very similarly to how today's elephants do. No surprise, they're related, but it is interesting that mammoths, as big as they were, were more closely related to the smaller Asian elephants than the larger African elephants. African elephants diverged from mammoths first, and then a couple million years later, Asian elephants did too. But just like elephants today, mammoths were social animals that lived in herds, wandering long distances together in search of food. They ate similar foods, being herbivores and feeding on vegetation, although the vegetation was likely much different, especially for woolly mammoths, as they had to forage under the snow for plants that may have even been under the dirt. 
They ate a lot of grasses and sedges along with flowering plants, shrubs and mosses. Mammoths needed a varied diet to keep up their large size, probably eating over 400 pounds of plant matter a day. This goes for our Colombian mammoths and steppe mammoths too, eating a variety of both grasses and plants. Stomach contents of a similar Huntington mammoth discovered in Utah showed grasses and sedges along with fur twigs and needles, and also oak and maple. Mammoths moved in herds mainly consisting of the female adults and their young. Once the males reached a maturity of around 10 years, they'd usually leave the herd and go off on their own. These mammals experience different climates. The woolly mammoths experiencing the coldest environments and the Colombian mammoths having varied cold climates and warmer climates for those who live near what is now Central America. Depending on where our mammoths were, they had a variety of predators that they had to watch out for usually pack animals, as not many lone animals would be able to bring them down. This meant wolves, and in many cases for our mammoths who lived in the Americas, the feared dire wolves. For our mammoths who lived in the same areas as cave hyenas, those were pack animals to watch out for. And then of course there was the Smilodon in the Americas, and the American lion as well. These were large felines who may be able to attack a mammoth themselves. However, adult male mammoths were usually large enough to defend themselves. Their size alone may have stopped these animals from attacking, but if it didn't, they possessed amazing strength, not to mention those deadly tusks. But the weaker adults, the sub-adults and the young, they were prime targets for pack hunters and large felines in those times. Staying in a herd typically helped to stave off these attacks but it was far from a bulletproof plan. The speed and power and ruthlessness of the predators of this time was difficult to defend against. All the predation from these animals was a lot, but never enough to diminish the existence of mammoths. Much of that was due to the excessive hunting of humans, who ironically could now bring them back if they wanted. What if they returned? We've seen scientists cloning sheep, dogs, cats, so many animals. And most recently, they've cloned and brought to life an extinct animal from our past, dire wolves. So if they could do that, who's to say they couldn't bring back mammoths? After humans were a main reason for the extinction of mammoths, would humans give mammoths another shot at existence? Let's imagine a world that is exactly as our world is now, but with the addition of mammoths. Woolly mammoths, Colombian mammoths, steppe mammoths, and even the Mammuthus subplanifrons. How would the landscape look then? Well, Mammuthus subplanifrons would probably fit nicely back into Africa. He'd still be the largest animal in his habitat, and the African elephants would now only be second largest. It would be interesting, the two being herbivores wouldn't be competitive predators or anything like that, but they may be competing for food sources. It could make for a lack of food to go around, possibly causing some elephants and some mammoths to be deprived of food, making them weaker, making them easier targets for predators like lions. There are, as always, poachers that run rampant in Africa. It's harder to regulate the illegal poaching there, so the mammoths would have a new threat. These mammoths existed long ago and wouldn't have had to worry about anything like modern hunters with guns. Then you'd have woolly mammoths searching for the coldest climates up north. It may be difficult for them to continue on as they had issues dealing with the warming climate already. The earth has only gotten warmer, but they may be able to find some small pockets up north to exist in, in the Arctic Circle. Steppe mammoths would be searching for both cold and not so cold climates through Eurasia. Just imagine that. You could see mammoths in Taiwan or perhaps rumbling through countries like Norway and Sweden. Hopefully, these civilizations would know well enough to leave the wild animals be, but would poachers then attempt to bring their craft to the countries up north? Areas in Europe that steppe mammoths inhabited are far more civilized now. Trying to coexist in a place with homes and buildings would be difficult to navigate. People might need to supplement their home insurance with a mammoth clause. And then there would be the Colombian mammoths inhabiting much of the Americas. It is far more civilized and modernized there now. These mammoths would have to find the pockets untouched by people, like the woods and forests of the Carolinas, Arkansas, the Dakotas, Wyoming, Montana, and Colorado. The areas where bears thrive. Maybe the mammoths could thrive there too. Some of the bears may be a threat and no more dire wolves, though the gray wolves may also be a threat. But no American lion and no Smilodon. The only felines they may encounter would be cougars and perhaps jaguars if they went far enough south and neither of those felines hunt in a pack and are far too small to bother the mammoth. 
Navigating through the increased human population could be difficult, but the predator scene looks better, just as long as people don't declare any time of year mammoth hunting season like they do with deer hunting season. Would they manage to survive? The thing we really want to know is, would they manage to survive? Woolly mammoths would have trouble surviving in many places. They'd be restricted to smaller areas, but perhaps in smaller numbers they could continue to live. The steppe mammoths might face similar issues. However, they were more adaptable. They'd have to find their way into the uninhabited wilderness in Asia to have their best chance of survival. The Colombian mammoths would also have to avoid civilization in the Americas, but at least there'd be less wild animal predators. And Mammothus subplanifrons would attempt to live alongside the elephants in Africa, which could work. Poachers would keep going for elephants as well as them, so perhaps it could benefit both species in a weird way. Both their numbers would dwindle from poaching, but as they'd be splitting the bill, they both only dwindle at slower rates. This may even benefit the African elephants and prevent them from becoming endangered or even going extinct. So it seems the mammoths may live in this environment in smaller numbers, though our mammoths preferring colder climates would have the toughest time. But this brings us to another important question, should they be brought back? You know of the infamous Dolly, the sheep that was cloned. That was the beginning. Now scientists have brought back the extinct dire wolves. Many would say that these animals had their shot at life at existence. They had their time period, and then they had to move over for other species to be born into the world. To bring them back is bringing back a predator, which could dwindle the numbers of other animals. It is also mimicking an act of God. Animals went extinct on their own, and for people to bring them back, is that wrong? However, is it different with the mammoths? We know they went extinct in large part to human hunting, so would the humans be reversing a horrible outcome by bringing them back. Would mammoths have continued to live if humans didn't hunt them in excess? And is it a benefit to other species? Poaching is too hard to control, and it has been the reason for extinction and endangerment of so many species of animals. The direction things are headed, more animals will go extinct due to poaching. Perhaps even elephants killed for their ivory tusks. What if mammoths were introduced? As was mentioned, the poachers that can't be contained would now have both animals to go for, meaning both species' numbers would dwindle at slower rates, perhaps preventing extinction. But is it wrong to bring back an animal just in hopes that they'll be hunted and to help save another animal? Is it wrong to bring them back at all, or could it benefit our world? The last mammoths were around when the pyramids were built. How would it be in a world where mammoths were around to see skyscrapers? 